Today we're talking about putting new line on a spinning reel. There are a couple things that you should and should not do when putting new line on a spinning reel. So we're going to cover those too. Let's get started. Before we actually put the line onto the spool, we should make sure that our reel and our rod are matched up to the weight of line that we're going to put on. So we can look right here at the spool of the reel and it says that it's meant for 6 to 10 pound braid or 4 to 8 pound monofilament line. The rod here says it's meant for 8 to 14 pound line and we're putting on 8 pound monofilament line today. So we're all set there. The next thing we can do is flip the reel and the rod over like this so it just stands itself up on the handle. It allows you to work with the reel a lot easier this way. It's held up uh, off the table. We want to make sure that our anti-reverse switch is switched to on. This little lever right here enables the handle of the reel to spin backward and forward if you have it turned off. So make sure that that's turned on so our handle can only spin one way. The next thing we're going to do is open this bail arm right here. When you push it over, it'll hold itself in place. And now we can get ready to actually put the line onto the spool. The first thing we're going to do is take the new line and run through the lowermost guide on the rod. And we're going to send it through from the top side to the bottom side, down toward the reel. And we need to tie a knot onto the reel itself. The way that I like to do this is to tie a uni knot in the line first. And that gives me this nice loop right here and a sliding knot. If you don't know how to tie a uni knot, I do have a close-up demonstration video that I'll link to here in the video and in the description. But I really like this because I can take this loop put it over the spool and then just pull on the main line and the knot goes right down to the spool and tightens up. So that's a really easy way to do it. You don't have to get your fingers way up in here and it, it can be hard to tie a knot in there. But you could also tie an arbor knot or you could tie two overhand knots. There's a lot of different knots you could tie. As long as it's tight against the spool, it really doesn't matter what kind of knot you tie. Once your knot is tight on the spool, you can just trim off this tag end here, this little loose part at the end of the knot. Cut that right up against the knot. Then you need to flip the bail back over and move the line over to this line roller right here. That's where it needs to be in order to get wound around the reel. Now we're ready to start putting the line onto the reel. Now to get the new line on the reel, the first thing I need to do is make sure that the line is coming off of this new spool in the same direction as my reel spins if I point it at the spool. So here you can see if I turn my handle, the reel is rotating counterclockwise. So I want the line to be coming off of this spool counterclockwise also. If it's not, I can flip the spool over and then it'll be coming off counterclockwise. Right now it is coming off the right direction. So I can hold some tension on the line here, about a foot above my reel, and I'm going to start cranking. I'm going to go around maybe 10 times just to make sure that the line is laying evenly across the spool. It's not slipping on the spool or anything like that. Everything is looking really good. So now I can start reeling a little bit faster. Now, one important thing to remember is to keep your first guide here, where the line is going through, over the top of the spool. If your rod is way off to the side, you're going to find that the line is catching on the edge of the spool. Your spool is bouncing around and it's going to cause little nicks in your line if it's constantly getting caught on the side of the spool. So keep that right over the middle and now you can start reeling faster. If you want, you can put a wet towel or something on your hand if the line feels like it's burning your hand a little bit. One thing to keep in mind here, if you're reeling it in and you're hearing a little bell sound or a clicking sound, that's your drag system. And you can tighten that by turning this knob here on the top clockwise. You don't ever want to be reeling line into your reel and having line coming out of your drag at the same time. It causes a ton of line twist. It doesn't matter if you're spooling line on or if you're fighting a big fish. If a fish is taking a lot of line out and you're reeling at the same time, don't do that. It's a really terrible idea. It'll give you a ton of line twists that you'll have to deal with later. So I'm gonna keep going on this until I fill up the spool. Now, how do I know when the reel spool is full? On a lot of reels like this one, you can see that the underside of the reel has a little bit different color. So there's this nice polished edge up here and there's a darker top of the spool. 
So where that color change happens is where it's full. You don't want to go past that line where the color changes. On some reels, there's going to be a tapered edge. That's the same thing. It's, it forms a line there that shows you where to stop when you're filling it up. The more line you have on, the faster or the farther you'll be able to cast, but it also creates a likelihood that your line is going to jump off of the spool on its own and create tangles. So you don't want that. It's a balancing act between casting distance and possible tangles. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. You can see where I'm at now. I'm almost to that line. And I'm gonna cut the line just a few inches up from my spool. Now my line is tucked into this little line keeper here and I can turn my drag counterclockwise to loosen it up. Once that's all the way loose, I'll be able to pop the spool right off and I can put the whole thing right into this cup of warm water. The water should be about the point where it becomes a little bit uncomfortable. Like if you were taking a hot shower, that's the temperature that you'd want it to be at. Okay, here's my spool. It came right off. Be careful if there's little gears and bearings and things on your spool. There could also be something hiding in the bottom of your spool. So just be careful if something drops out that you remember where it goes. And you're gonna take this whole spool and just put the whole thing right there into the water. So what this does is soften up the line and sort of reset the memory of the line to make loops that are the size of this spool instead. Okay, it's been soaking for about 15 minutes. I'm gonna take this out of the cup there's actually a bearing sitting at the bottom of the cup. This might happen with yours too. Sometimes the bearings come off of this reel shaft and they get stuck in the bottom of the spool. There's, there's another one sitting in there right now. So you just have to grab the bearing out of the cup and just put it back in. Just slide it right back in the middle. Okay, so now the bearing is back in. I can slide it back onto my reel shaft. Just push down. And now you're gonna tighten your drag down. Keep tightening that drag until it's most of the way tight. You should be able to pull line out of the reel by hand without it breaking if your drag is set correctly. The last thing you might wanna do is check out our video on straightening monofilament line, which can help you feel more bites and see more bites if you're watching your line. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll catch you next time.